Hello and welcome back to Book Break. My name is Elizabeth, I'm from the channel Books and Pieces and I'm here today to talk to you about getting into sci-fi. Lots of people are put off by the idea of science fiction for a couple of different reasons. One set of people think it's going to be kind of pulpy and trashy and that it's not got like literary weight or merit and lots of people kind of think it's going to be difficult and hard and dry and full of science and not enough about people. Well I am here today to tell you that it is neither of those things. Science fiction like every genre and type of literature has books that cover every type of thing. There are books that are trashy, there are books that are dry, but there are lots in between that are wonderful, absolutely amazing pieces of literature, and ones that are brilliant adventures, ones that are full of heart and love. The types of science fiction that you're going to be into are going to depend on the types of books that you already read and enjoy. And so today I'm going to be recommending some science fiction books that I love based on different genres or themes that people might be into. I am going to start, however, with probably the most typically sci-fi story of the lot, and that is John Scalzi's Old Man's War. If you are into adventures and thrillers, then why not try an adventure thriller book in space. Old Man's War is set in a kind of future world where the military force in outer space is made up entirely of people who are recruited after the age of 75. Nobody is entirely sure why the military will only recruit elderly people and how they are going to fight in outer space, but it continues to happen. And of course we get to find out how it happens by following one of these characters along. He and we then get thrust into an amazing space adventure as we continue on his life in the military. There's aliens, there's war, there's fighting, there's misunderstandings, there's communication, there's love, and it genuinely is a really good book. If you want something that is fun and fast-paced, you really don't need to look further than John Scalzi. He's also got plenty of other books out there, so if you get into this you can carry on with the series and then jump into his other worlds. How about something for people who like literature that deals with the social and political issues of our day? Well I'm going to recommend that you try Mallory Blackman's Noughts and Crosses. This is a contemporary classic and Mallory Blackman was the children's laureate. You really cannot go wrong here. This is set in a world where society is divided between the noughts who are white and who are discriminated against because of the colour of their skin and the blacks who are known as crosses who have all the power and privilege. Despite this two kids, Callum a nought and Effie a cross, are the best of friends when they are young children, and as they begin to grow up they have to face and understand and fight against the systems of their world that are trying to tear them apart. If you love the book, the series continues on and Mallory Blackman's writing is consistently amazing. Now I know for some people science fiction is something they've only really experienced at the movies because there are a lot of big sci-fi blockbusters, one of which was last summer's big hit Arrival. But did you know it was based on an award-winning science fiction short story by Ted Chiang and it features in this collection Stories of Your Life and Others. The one that it was based on is actually called Story of Your Life and it is phenomenal. Story of Your Life is an intertwining narrative with one half exploring the linguistic discovery of scientists and aliens like trying to communicate with each other and then the other half telling a very personal tale of a mother and her daughter. There's a lot of praise at the beginning of this book and one of them described it as a slow growing crystal, another as meticulously built and slowly discovered until epiphany strikes and that's exactly what reading Chang's stories are like. The narrative of the linguist talking to the aliens is incredibly complex at times, talking about very dry sort of scientific terms of linguistics, but it manages to balance perfectly and harmonise with the personal emotional human story and they come together in the most amazing way and that is characteristic of all of Chang's storytelling. Chang is a master of short fiction and this collection is so very worth reading. Now if like me you were more into the idea of Arrival as a movie because it dealt with linguistics, like go with me here because I'm figuring that your book people there might be a fair few people who are interested in the idea of language and words and the power they have over us, well you might like to try Embassy Town by China Mieville. This is not the type of book that a lot of people would recommend for getting into sci-fi because it is complex, it is very sci-fi, there's aliens, there's a strange planet, there's spaceships and travel, and Mieville's writing is not necessarily the easiest. But not everybody wants easy. Sometimes we want our brains to be challenged so that we feel like we have conquered something and learned and we are magnificent beasts.
it's set on a place where humans and aliens coexist, but their societies are very much divided, simply because it is incredibly difficult for them to communicate. Only a small number of humans can communicate directly with the aliens, and these are called the ambassadors. One feature of the aliens' language that is particularly difficult is that they cannot lie, and so much of human communication is based on small and subtle lies, metaphors, similes, and so on. It's very strange, very weird, but if you are excited by language and what words can do to us to change our brains, then this might be the book for you. How about if you're a YA reader? Well, there's a lot of amazing sci-fi out there for young adult readers that often goes under the name of dystopians. But if you've never tried any, or if you just want to try some amazing stories, then I recommend Kaleidoscope. This is a collection of diverse young adult science fiction stories, and it is one of my favourite collections ever. There's 20 stories in here, and they cover the gamut of fun adventures to dystopian futures. There's joy, there's heartbreak, there's so much emotion, there's all the ups and downs of teenage life, and there's some damn fine writing. A great place to start for loads of people in science fiction is with Ursula Le Guin. You are in very good hands with this woman. It tells the story of a human who comes to an alien planet to kind of be their ambassador. So he is doing lots of politicking and communicating with the aliens and then this huge political drama goes down and he becomes a persona non grata and must flee for his life. But what people often come back to in this book is the idea of gender. The aliens are a species that only has one gender. Each individual is kind of hermaphroditic when it comes to the time when they are able to mate. Each individual is able to take on the typically female or male characteristic of either gestating the baby themselves or just passing their DNA on to the other. This causes the human ambassador a lot of strife and through his confusion and the alien's confusion at his confusion we get our ideas about gender and sexual characteristics challenged a lot. Written in the 1960s this was a big deal so if you want to read a beautifully written book that manages to do a hell of a lot in just a few hundred pages then this is the book for you. What if you'd like a little bit of light humour? Lots of people love a fun book. Well, how about The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? This is a classic for a reason. It is hilarious and fantastic. If you've somehow managed to never hear of it before, well, I don't know where you've been, but here's the precy. One Thursday afternoon, Arthur Dent is minding his own business, trying to stop his house from being demolished by a load of builders, when the Earth is unexpectedly destroyed to make way for the hyperspace byway. Arthur is luckily rescued by his friend Ford Prefect, who it turns out is actually secretly an alien. Unfortunately, his strange and mind-boggling adventures have only just begun, and they are going to involve a manically depressed android, the worst poetry anybody has ever heard, the secret adventures of mice, two very intelligent computers, one very important book, a very confused whale, and a bowl of violets. This is the bind-up of all five books in the trilogy. Yes, it's a trilogy of five books. That will make a lot more sense once you've read them, I promise. However, there are also individual versions of each book in the series that look somewhat like this. Whichever way you prefer to read them, don't forget your towel. If you're one of the people who doesn't want to get into sci-fi because it's going to be dry and scientific and lack that human and emotional stuff, or you've tried stuff before that was like that, then I suggest that you counter that idea with The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. One of the most joyous books I have ever read. This tells the story of a crew of a small ship doing what is basically like road building in space. There's drama and background stuff, but the story really isn't about that. It's about the individual characters and their lives on that ship. The characters and the universe that is created in this book are diverse and wonderful, thought-provoking and thoughtful. We get to know them, we get to know their histories through small moments in their lives. This is a book about found family, about friendship, about love. It's about the ties that hold us together and keep us afloat when the universe is vast and dark. This book will give you emotions like nothing else, like they will be torn from your body whether you like it or not. It is beautiful, heartwarming and emotional but it is also about aliens in space. So there you go, a selection of starting points for science fiction. I hope at least one of these appeals to you and you can try it and find a whole new world of science fiction opening up to you. Thanks for watching Book Break and until next time, happy reading.